Hey all, Scott here. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how we can connect multiple Microsoft lists together. So if you've created multiple tables of data using Microsoft or SharePoint lists, we can easily connect them together, meaning you won't have to recreate all of that data again. For example, you may be working on a brand new sales list. You have a customer list and also a products list. Now you're not gonna to wanna to do is go and build all of that data in your brand new sales list. So instead, we can very simply connect our sales list to our products list and also to our customer list, meaning we can reference data points in those multiple tables through our brand new sales list. And we're gonna do that using a lookup column. So with that in mind, we're gonna dive into Microsoft lists and show you how to connect those data sources together really simply. And if you do like this video, we'd love it if you hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe for more great content or we even show you how to work better in the whole Microsoft 365 suite of applications. Anyway, let's head into lists and start linking some data. So let's head into our sales and marketing SharePoint site and check out a list we created earlier. Here's our order list, it includes an order summary, invoice amount, who the sale was made to, and a date. But as yet, we need to link up our customer name and also our products. And the good news is I've already created a separate customer list, including our customer names, internal account managers using Microsoft lists. And in addition, I've also created a product list listing all the products that can be purchased on our invoice, including things like the code name, product type, and the color as well, all in separate Microsoft lists. What we're gonna to have to do is bring that together. When someone then submits an order, they're going to want to buy products and it's gonna come from a customer. So let's go and add a column to our order list and then select a lookup column. In doing so, we can now also select the column name, the description, which I'm now gonna input here. And we can also select where that additional lookup column is coming from. In my scenario, it's gonna be from our customer list and I'm gonna use the customer name in that list. I can also add additional columns that can be shown on our order list from that table of information such as our customer contact email address. Now, of course, we won't have multiple selections. There's only one customer for our order, but we do want it to have been required for everything that we fill out when we get a new order through. So go ahead and then click on save. Now, what we can then see is if we go into a new item in our list, we can now define the customer and have it in a simple dropdown linked up to our customer list. In addition, I can create another lookup column that connects all of our products to our orders. I'll again create the name as a product and I'll associate that lookup column to our product list and now pick up the title, which is effectively the title of each of our individual products. We also can add further columns, at which point I won't do that. And we can then go ahead and click on save. And when we go ahead and fill in a new item for our orders, we can now once again define the customer name we can also select a product from our product list, which is in a separate table with all of that information. So here I could select one of our gaming devices, cameras and so forth. But if I go and input one of our products, we can see we have a slight problem here. We can only input one product. We have to get that updated, of course, and we can do so very easily. We can go back into the product column, click into column settings and then select edit. And what we can also do under more options is select that this will allow multiple selections of product and also we require that information to submit an order. Once I've made that change, we can head back into that new item field. Once again, fill in our new item, which is our order for our gaming console order, the invoice amount, the order date, the salesperson, the customer name, but also we can define the products, which can have many different products associated under this order. And there we go. We can now click on save and we now have our order in our Microsoft list also showing the customer name, the products they've ordered, which are all coming from separate tables. And when we're working with Microsoft lists in this way, we can simply click into the customer name to see the source data and make changes. And likewise, we can do the same with the products. We can also get back to that item and update it all within the product list. So super handy there to link all of that data from separate tables into your order list. And you can use that for a variety of different tasks. Not only that, we can even see that because I brought in the customer email, we can see an additional field is shown in my order list, which actually doesn't even exist in this list. It's simply referenced from our lookup. 
We can also go back into the edit column for products. And we can also add further of those additional lookups, such as the product code and bring in very easily, which just effectively copies the reference in and that data is now easily visible. So a super easy way there to link multiple Microsoft lists and create tables of data which work for you. So there we have it. We now have a sales list connected to products and also customers, and you can take those lessons and apply it to your own logic when using Microsoft lists. And we'd love it if you hit the like button and also subscribe for more content in the future, and I'll be seeing you in the next one. <music>